morning farm friends. So today we're gonna to be working on fertilizing our vegetables and stuff that we've got planted. Um, things like our tomatoes that have been started for a long time. They need to be fertilized about once a week throughout the season. Um, and then I've got some corn and stuff that is like a super heavy feeder. Sorry, our mosquitoes are really bad this year. We've had a ton of rainfall and a lot of flooding in my area. So you'll have to excuse me. Um, but like corn is a super heavy feeder so you need to fertilize it very frequently and you need to fertilize it a lot so we are going to get that started um and some of the other stuff we're going to get done today is we're going to get weed eated we were finally the rain has let up enough for us to uh everything to dry out a little bit so my husband was able to mow the other day but we still need to weed eat so we're gonna get some weed eating done today. I've got some peppers I still need to get in the ground today along with some celery and then some cherry tomatoes. So we've got a kind of a list of projects to do today but we're gonna get them going. But first off, uh, I'm gonna start with watering and fertilizing because fertilizer is best done at late at night or early in the morning um, so that the plants have time to absorb those nutrients. If you do it in the height of the, the heat of the day, you run a chance of burning the plant um, and them absor absorbing the water too quickly and it causing more problems than goodness in the whole situation. So that's what we're going to do. It is only, it is nine o'clock right now. So now is a really good time to get this fertilized. So that's what we're going to get going. Um, I'm just using, I have a bunch of this miracle Grow left over from a couple years ago. This is still good, so we're gonna use miracle Grow, and then we're just going to get everything fertilized that's already in the ground. So for this brand, I believe, I'm gonna save in here. So it's one and a half tablespoons mixed with a one and a half gallons of water. Um, I think this is a one and a half gallon, so that's just perfect.
Okay, friends, so that's gonna be it for the fertilizing. That did really, really well. Um, as you can see, that I did have some pumpkin seeds that have sprouted. I have my wa baby watermelon is still doing really good. And then I have some sort of squash. I have no idea what it is. I dropped the pan that they were in, and so they were not individually marked, so I'm not really sure. It could be a sp spaghetti squash. It could be an acorn squash, a patty pan squash, or it could be a loofah. Not really sure. I don't think they, it's a loofah. I think it's one of the squashes, but I'm not for sure which one. So it's gonna be a wait and see game. But let's go ahead and do a quick garden tour right quick to show you how everything's coming along and what's going on with that, okay? So our onions are doing beautifully. I mean, look at the sizes of some of these. Look at this. This size is amazing. I'm so happy. I've never grown onions before, so this is great. My kale is looking better. There's still something eating on it, but when I got rid of my cabbage, because it just wasn't gonna do anything, it was being eaten too heavily, I gave my cabbage to the chickens. Uh, all my other stuff has really improved. This is my Swiss char. As you can see, that that is looking really, really good, so I'm happy with that. These are my green beans. I've got a couple of cherry tomato plants here, which has already got tomatoes on them. I mean, look at this. I already got tomatoes and then I've got some these are tomatillos and they have bloomed and they're already starting to try and put fruit on so I'm so excited for that these beds right here are all my sunflower seeds these are the giant mammoth sunflowers they have come up they are looking beautiful they are growing exponentially I can't wait to see how well they do or how tall they get I'm so excited these are my tomato plants. These are the early girls. They're looking okay. Um, I think they've had a later start than the rest of my tomatoes. You can definitely see the ones, the difference between the ones I started and the ones that were started in the groceries or in the store. So you can see, I still need to get the trellis up on this row, but they are a lot further behind than my rest of my tomatoes. Cause you can see like these are not super tall i also think this is a bush variety so i may not even need a trellis for these these over here are our um roma tomatoes and you can see exponentially how much bigger they already are so i do see blooms on these but i don't see any fruit forming as of yet but that's okay and then as we go down here these are the sunrise love and these are a lot smaller. There was actually four of these in a pot together. Um, but this one's looking a lot better than the rest of them. Than the rest of these four. And that one down at the end is just really, really small. But that's okay. We're going to see how they do. These are some Roman tomatoes here. We've got blooms on this. I'm going to strip some of these bottom leaves off right quick. So if you don't know, a lot of disease and stuff from tomatoes comes from their leaves touching the ground around them. So if you strip off any leaves near the ground, then they will do exponentially better and they'll be a lot more disease resistant. So that's what we're going to do right quick. Gonna start training these up here. So that it makes it easier come harvest time. I'm just gonna try and weave them in and around that. This one is doing really good. I'm gonna kind of scoot it over though. I 
And look, look at this, guys. We've already got a baby tomatoes on there. Isn't that exciting? Now these are our purple Cherokees. They are looking really, really good. We got blooms on these. try and get these squished through there. This one's ready to come back the other way. And then just like with the other ones, we're gonna take some of these bottom leaves off. So ideally what you wanna do is you wanna kinda groom your tomato plant so that it is putting more effort into fruit production than into leaf production. Look at this one. I don't think this one is going to do me any good. So I'm going to go ahead and twist this off and let that heal. And look at this. We've got a small tomato here starting off probably from a cast off here. Okay. And this one I'm going to pull back through here. There we go. And then it can go back through that way. There we go. Get these little branches off right here. See? So that there's no, no leaves at the bottom down here. The stem is nice and clean, and then the rest of it's going to come upward. These are just getting to the size that they could start climbing. But they're looking really good. Alright, let's go over here to our pepper plants. So, as you know, I have a ton of pepper plants this year. I've actually already got peppers coming up. I've got these. These are California Wonder Bell Peppers. These peppers are looking absolutely fabulous. And then I have also a poblano in here that's growing. It is beautiful. And then, see, here's another little baby bell pepper. And we've got some that are probably going to be forming here on this one pretty soon. We've got a little one right here forming. These are struggling a little bit, probably because they really need to be planted up, which is what we're fixing to get started on. Um, I still have to fill this other bin right here. And then we will be able to get these planted, which I'm super excited for.
All these are going to be my bell peppers and I'll probably pull my poblanos over and plant in this one too. We're just going to have to see. Okay, I've got two extra bell peppers here. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to give these to a friend of mine. Um, her garden didn't do very well when she got started. Um, so I think I'm going to give these to them and see if that doesn't help them out a little bit. So we're going to set these to the side. That is all bell peppers in this one bed. I wanted this many bell peppers so that I can make sure and have a decent harvest of them with the thought that they may only give me one or two fruit per per plant depending on the size of the plant. So hoping this will give me a decent produce crop this year. Hi friends, so this one's mostly hot peppers. I'm not really sure what all I still have in here. Some of them did die. 
So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them out over here on the ground and sort them by type and see what I still have left here. This one's nothing. I thought the blonde one. There's another bell pepper. I did not think I planted that many. It's a serrano. That one looks good. That's my cayenne. I've only got one, so I'm barely gonna put these in like a regular pot this year. <coughs> I have a ton of poblanos here. Um, I like poblano peppers better than I like the green chilies. The green chilies are really nice, but green chilies <laughs> are a lot easier to get from, I'm super close to New Mexico, so their hash chili fest in the fall, uh, we get a lot of that shipment to our local area and uh, several of our grocery stores locally actually have the roasters that will roast them for you. <laughs> so. I am not going to worry about green chilies. So I've got two habaneros, and I've got two serranos, and then I've got six jalapenos, and two, four, six, seven poblanos. So, so let's just see what we can fit in here. I'm pretty sure I can fit half of this with hot peppers, and the rest of the poblanos can go on this end. So we're just going to see what we can get done here. Yes, this is kind of squished in, but they're going to be regularly fertilized. And so they're still going to be getting the nutrients that they need per plant. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I will say all of these plants do have super healthy root systems on them, so I'm very happy with that.
All right, friends, so there we have it. <clears throat> We've got our serranos, our habaneros, our jalapenos. All of this is poblanos. And then of course, our entire bed over here of bell peppers. So, and then I do have, still have a cayenne pepper here on the ground that I'm gonna get put into a pot since there's only one of them. It makes a lot more sense just to put it in a pot. That is another bell pepper, which will go with the other two. For my friend and uh we're gonna get this mess cleaned up and then the last thing we're probably gonna do is do some weed eating and then hopefully friday i'll be able to get this chicken run finished because i've got chicks that are <clears throat> i have chicks that are six to eight weeks old now that need to be put into the greenhouse until they're old enough to go out to the other property so that they don't get killed by the larger chickens so we're gonna get that started problem hopefully to get that done on friday so i'm going to take a break here for a minute and then we'll be back out to do some okay friends so after spending some time inside doing a couple of things inside um i've decided i'm not going to go ahead and weed eat today so uh what we've done outside is all we're going to get done today outside um i've got some products inside that i need to get done and some i need to go grocery shopping and whatnot so um but that's still a lot we got done this morning. I'm very happy with it. We got those peppers planted up. We got everything fertilized, so everything is good to go. So I just want to take the time to say thank you for spending some time with me today. And um, there's more to come. Of course, there's a lot of projects. We're going into summer. Unfortunately, I haven't been posting much. My corporal tunnel in my hand has really been bothering me. In addition to that, we've had about seven to nine weeks worth of constant heavy rain which is completely abnormal for us and so basically we had an early summer followed by a spring and now we're back to summer so there's a lot of stuff that got delayed and switched around and whatnot um, my local area has had a ton of severe flooding that has actually caused people to have to be evacuated from their homes and whatnot um, so my job has actually, uh, picked up quite a bit. And so there's been a lot of things to have to deal with that along with the regular summer travel coming through the hotels. So, um, but that's going to be it for today for this video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.